Hello everyone, uh, welcome to our series on Indian culture and today uh, what we're going to do, we're going to combine the introduction to Indian art, that is part one, this is a class 11th NCRT, along with the, the you know, some portions of the CCRT and uh, a chapter from uh, Binder Singh uh, on, and she is one of the premier uh, teachers of history in India. So a history of ancient and early medieval India and we're going to talk about uh, the culture of the Indus Valley civilization in this video, right? So uh, let's start without further ado. Now, uh, before we start, uh, let's play pay some homage. Uh, and the first person uh, is John Marshall from the left, and he was a director of ASI from 1902 to 1928. Uh, then we have uh, Rakhal Das Banerjee, who excavated Mohenjo Daro in 1921. Then we have Dayaram Saini, right, uh, wearing this nice brooch here, uh, you know, that's wonderful, uh, who excavated Harappa in the 1920s. Then we have Madhu Swarupvats, who also excavated Harappa in 1920 and 1930. So the history of Indus Valley civilization is very interesting. Uh, in 1926, uh, Charles Mason, an uh, adventurer who deserted the East India Company stood on the mounds of Harappa uh, and he was convinced that this was where Macedonian invader defeated King Porus in battle, right? And then after that, Alexander Burns also visited Harappa. They all thought it is very important. In the 1850s, Alexander Cunningham uh, was very in, uh, deeply interested in archaeology. He visited this place. Uh, so when Cunningham revisited Harappa in 1872 uh, as a DG of the ASI, he was dismayed that the moons had been badly disturbed by railway contractors who took away uh, the bricks. So Cunningham found uh, stone tools and ancient pottery uh, with this, and obtained a seal uh, with a bull with a strange handwriting. And that is how uh, the excavation started. And along with that, we had um, all these people, that is John Marshall and so on, excavating these places. Now, uh, let's start with the arts of the Indus Valley. Now, um, the most famous, I would say, obviously, is you. You know, anybody who looks uh, thinks of Indus Valley, I think uh, the priest king, uh, uh, and this picture is uh, some very very famous. And further, obviously, the unicorn seal. There is a Pashupati seal, and so on. So the arts of the Indus Valley emerged during the second half of the third millennium BC, and uh, the form of art uh, found from the various sites include sculpture, seals, pottery, gold jewelry, terracotta figures, etc. And we look at each of them. So artists, uh, if you think about uh, what were their sensibilities, I would say they had very vivid imagination and they were had fine, uh, you know, aesthetic sense. Uh, their delineation of uh, human and animal figures was highly realistic in nature. And uh, since the anatomical details included in them were uh, was unique, also, in the case of terracotta art, the modeling of animal figures was drummed in a very careful manner. And we'll talk about that, uh, right? So before uh, we start with the arts, uh, let's look at the sites of uh, Indus Valley. So obviously, the major sites are Harappa. This is here. It is on the banks of the Ravi. And uh, obviously, uh, we have uh, Mohenjo-daro, which is the, on the bank of river Indus. Now, um, her series of Harappa obviously is further northern uh, than the others, right? And it, they both are the earliest examples of civic planning, right? Other markers were uh, houses, markets, storage facilities, offices, public baths, arranged in grid, grid like pattern. So if you want to see, look at this. Uh, so look at the roads being in a grid like pattern, right? Going like this. Uh, then this is a well, this is a well flanked by houses in Mohenjo Daro. Then look at the, how well the streets are laid down. In, and these, these are all actual pictures from Mohenjo Daro. So uh, there was also a highly developed drainage system. Uh, so for that, let's look at other places. So look at this is Kali Vangan, the main street there, the house falls uh, in Banavali, the eastern gate. Uh, now we can see the wells and rail drains in Lothal. Look at the drains, and that's what we were talking about. There is also a dockyard, right? And you can imagine a lot of ships here, right? And then there is an upsidal structure, the cross section of defense wall, and those, all those things are there. So uh, this kind of tells you that how advanced the urbanization was there in that period. And it seems that the human civilization is perhaps 
uh, going into circles that we reached to a level of civilization and then again we destroyed ourselves as human beings are self destructed by uh, destructive in nature so that might have happened so harappa and mohenjo daro are obviously situated in pakistan uh, then we have lothal and dholavira so just to have a look this is dholavira here and this is in there in the kutch then this lothal uh, which is very close to uh, the sabarmati river uh then we have uh, rakhigiri in haryana and this is rakhigiri here now then we have ropar as we talked about this is very close to chandigarh then we have kalibangal and balathal so kalibangal and balathal uh these are in uh, rajasthan so all these uh, you know uh, they can you know ask you questions about on which river bank is harappa or indus and so on uh right the northern most obviously there's normally a standard question that what is the most northern the short the guys the northern most alamgir is the most uh eastwards sutkendor is most westwards and so on so that is the kind of question they tend to ask in various objective type papers so as i'm talking about this these are uh pictures from mohenjo daro right and you can see how well the grid pattern is there uh there there's a well still existing think about it 4000 years since this uh, place was constructed and the well stands then we have a uh, kalibangal and uh, beautiful house walls as well are there as well though obviously uh very different so it was not as if uh, that one uh, part of the indus valley was very similar to another there was not homogeneous construction but still there were common traits i would say right wells and drains so you can see in lothal so that is a wonderful uh, thing then uh, we have a tank this is a beautiful tank so look at this this is where water was constructed and you could come down and actually uh, clean it and so on then there's a northern gate which is being shown right and some some people still uh, you know tend to live close to these places then this is the uh, dholavira citadel uh, eastern gate with pillar of figments then there's a well here there's a massive drain shown in uh, dolavira as well so right you can see there is a commonalities right uh, in urbanization i would say uh, now if i as uh, you know think about the architecture obviously uh, the indus valley is beautiful but uh, what about the sculpturing so uh, the true time sculpturing they did uh, the stone statues uh, stone sta statues were found in harappa and mohenjo daro the exa exact uh, excellent examples of three dimensional volumes uh, right in stone obviously there are two uh, male figures there is one torso in red sandstone that there is another bust of the bearded man in stateite which is extensively discussed this is the one right the priest king supposedly and a lot of people say it looks like narendra modi right uh, then uh, we have uh, the bronze casting um, so the art of bronze casting was practiced uh, on a wide scale by the harappans and their uh, bronze casting was used using the loss wax and this is the only uh, you know sarape dew right is a question which is asked so their wax figures were first covered with coating of clay and then allowed to dry and then the wax was heating and the molten wax was drained out through a tiny hole made in the clay cover and the whole hollow mold was created and this was filled with molten metal and this took the shape of the original body right and once it cooled the clay cover was completely removed i think this is something that we have also done in our workshops in case you have done engineering now uh, the most amazing example of the bronze sculpture is uh, perhaps the dancing girl uh, so the dancing girl obviously is one of the best known artifacts from the indus uh, valley here yeah, and uh, is this uh, you know approximately a 4 inch copper figure and uh, it is found in mohenjo daro uh, there is a bun uh, so she has a uh, long hair tied in a bun there are bangles all across her left arm and it's totally covered then there's a bracelet or a amulet so there's a bracelet or amulet uh, on a bangle on the right arm and a kavari uh, right shell uh, necklace is also seen around her neck right her hand is on her hip and uh, her left hand is clasped in a traditional indian gesture chaturbhanga position as we call it and the figure is full of expression bodily vigor and conveys a lot of information it's as if this was some princess right very very fam famous and she is looking down upon everybody else you know i would say this is something very similar to what we have today in our instagram generation um uh, 
bronze uh, sculptures also the next example is the bronze f- uh, figure of a bull from mahenjodaro uh, the massiveness of the bull and the furry of its charge are eloquently expressed and the animal is shown standing on its head turned tight with the you know to the right and there's a cord around its neck so then that is also there this is the one now uh, what other things were so bronze and you know stone sculptures are one so the other uh, usage other material which the indus valley use uh, was terracotta so the indus valley people made terracotta images but also compared uh, you know to the stone and bronze statues terracotta uh, you know expressions are crude in nature so there is a very very famous uh, terracotta plow all uh, found at banwali and this is objected at question also there is a female figure in also this very crude if you look at it uh, there are more realistic in gujarat sites and kalimangan but other sites uh, terracotta is not that uh, obviously um, you know mature or refined i would say uh, there is a terracotta mask of a horn deity which also has been formed toy carts with wheels whistles rattles birds games this was also rendered in terracotta in that time okay so look at these so these seem to be toys so this seems to be an elephant a dog right uh, this is a crude figure again this is the mask we are talking about uh, then there is miniature perforated pot right so you can see uh, with Uh, different type of impressions and uh, obviously we talked about a uh, different type of sculptures and pottery also being there now this is uh, the female uh, figurine with head shape uh, you know headdress and this seems seen to be the mother goddess uh, then these are others uh, you know this is maybe a picture a person's uh, terracotta image then uh, very interestingly uh, there are also games various games types of games they also play this is a, a dice as well right and different other types of games maybe with a you know small ball which can be played right and these are like type of puzzles which you had to take on uh, the ball inside right so i think a lot of you might have played that then obviously a perforated bird uh, right um, a bull with a movable head this is very very famous as well then there's a cart also so you know all these are there now uh, the terracotta images or the figures are not that uh, refined but the seals are extremely extremely refined i would say archaeologists have discovered thousands of seals uh, usually made of steatite and o- occasionally they are made of uh, agate chert copper fins terracotta they are beautiful figures of animals such as unicorn bull uh, rhinoceros so you can see uh, the tiger and the elephant here right and the unicorn at the top bison goat etc and the realistic rendering uh, of these animals in various modes is remarkable and the purpose may be of uh, you know they say that you know the purpose of producing seals are mainly commercial because uh, these were found in the sumerian empire as well and it seems to be a seal of a uh, of the harappan civilization it appears that the seals uh, were also used in amulets and carried on persons of you know their owner perhaps a modern day aadhar card or something a uh, standard uh, harappan seal was a square plaque of 2 by 2 inches usually made of soft uh, river stone so it seems like it was used as an identity card each seal is engraved with the pictographic script which is yet to be deciphered some seal have also been found in gold and ivory so it seems there was a hierarchy as well maybe the most famous seal is perhaps the pashupati and uh, people say this is uh, sh- shows that uh, shiva was worshiped even before uh, the aryans came into india right and maybe shiva as a god was uh, basically confiscated or taken over by the hindus or the aryans um, like the way they have done to the others as well so uh, this seal depicts a human figure seated cross legged an elephant and a tiger are depicted to the right side of the seated figure while on the left side is a rhino or a buffalo which is seen right so elephant and tiger on one side and uh, on the left right uh, oh, sorry on the right and uh, then on the left we have the rhino and a buffalo so this is the buffalo and the rhino and this is the elephant and the tiger Okay, and there are two antelopes also. So we're just sitting below. So it seems Pashupati, so the god of all animals, and Lord Shiva is seen to be that. Okay, right. Uh, or you know, in another way, you can think about it that uh, you know the Indus Valley civilization. Um, there was no Aryan invasion, and uh, there's continuity and assimilation, 
and uh, in the hindu smile isolation it was just the, uh, the hindus itself right so there is a debate uh, altogether there is a right though the aryan invasion seems to be a westernized theory to uh, reduce the confidence of the people of the subcontinent now uh, these are the various harappan seals as you can see beautiful ones i would say right uh, and um, uh, most of you might not have seen all of them right in your various ncrts so i think this would be uh, i think you would really enjoy just looking at them what about pottery so the indus valley pottery uh, chiefly was of very fine wheel made ware and very few obviously were handmade plain pottery was more common than painted ware but uh, there was plain pottery of red clay or fine red or gray slip uh, it include knob ware ornaments of throws of knobs uh, there was black painted ware fine coating of red slips with geometric animal designs look at these right were obviously there in glossy black paint polychrome uh, pottery is rare uh, it mainly comprises of small vases decorated with geometric patterns as you can see here uh in size where is also rare and we see let's see an example of that before uh perforated pottery of uh, includes a large hole at the bottom and small holes all over the wall and was probably uh, used for straining liquor it seems uh, pottery was uh, for household purposes also found in many shapes and sizes as could be conceived of for daily practical use so you can see um the different types of pottery here in a um, much bigger pot um what about the beads and ornaments so hoards of jewelry uh, you know have been found in mohenjo daro and lothal and it includes a uh, necklaces of gold and semi precious stones there's copper bracelets red beads there gold earrings uh, red heads ornaments there fiance pendants buttons there are beads of steatite and gemstones uh, the bead industry has been uh, discovered at chano daro and lothal so that is there the beads were made of cornelian amethyst jasper crystal quartz steatite turquoise lapis lazuli etc uh, metals like copper bronze gold shell fine terracotta or burnt clay was used in the manufacturing of beads so, so look at the different types of uh, necklaces so necklaces of cornelian beads gold bangles of terracotta right so look at these beautiful ones these are the cornelian beads right and then there is a uh, lapis lazuli right and then there are also gold and terracotta beads so the bead industry obviously seems to be have well developed uh, beads obviously are of different types as you can see uh, metals are uh, like copper bronze gold right are also used for manufacturing so uh, the beads are of various types uh, disc shaped cylindrical spherical etc the beads obviously uh, can uh, were made of two or more stones cemented and some of them were made also with gold covers uh and this is another seal as you can see the different type of seal i would say um, maybe uh, right a round seal uh, then there church blades uh, stone games right you know were played at that time the stone weights uh, there's also very very uh, the binary system 1 2 4 16 16 right that type of binary system was found for counting as well copper arrowhead cells then this is the terracotta cart and all so now at the end of it uh, how different they were from us that's the question that uh, we might have so from archaeological finds we feel that uh, the people of uh, indus valley were fashion conscious as we are today there were different hairstyles in vogue and there was also wearing of beard was very popular senaba was used as a cosmetic face paint lipstick corellum eyeliner was known to them many stone structural remains are found in dola vera which shows that uh, indus valley people used stone in construction right though obviously the other places where the burnt bricks are used in mohenjo daro and harappa the artists and craftsmen of indus valley were extremely skilled in variety of crafts metal casting stone carving metals painting pottery and making terracotta images using simplified motifs of animals plants and birds now with this um, you know we'll end uh, thank you so much for listening 